Welcome, welcome. Jennifer Jimenez here, the founder of the Brave Thinking Institute Health and Wellbeing Division, where we empower people to create and live a life they love. And I believe you are deserving of a vibrant, radiant, dynamically healthy life that you love. And today I have an incredibly special guest, a great new friend and colleague of mine, Kimmy Seltzer. Kimmy, thank you for joining us. I can't oh wait. Oh my for- God. I can't wait for this. <laughs> yeah. Wait for everybody to meet you. So I love this because, you know, I have a lot of beautiful, like-minded, soul-centered, amazing souls and people who are change agents and they're looking to be more confident. They're looking to create a life they love. And here at the Institute, we talk about four primary areas of life, health and well-being, love and relationships, vocational freedom and fulfillment and time and money freedom. And I know you are a love and relationships expert, genius, extraordinaire goddess. And this is an area that I don't really touch on. So I wanted to bring you on because you also have a really unique approach to really helping the person embody the energy and the vibration that is the match to the love that they're seeking. So I want to do an official you know, um, intro and share with everyone your bio just so that they can get to know you. But before, before I go into that, give, let's, let's tickle them. Let's tease them. What are three things they're going to learn today that you think that they're going to want to stay on to hear? Oh, I love that you use the word tease because one of the things we're going to talk about is flirting. And that's part of the flirt is the tease. Um, Also how to just look and feel your best so that you attract what you want. And we're going to talk about style and wardrobe. And we're also going to touch upon body language and how that interacts with attraction. I love that because way more than people realize we're not communicating with our words, but we are communicating with how we show up, the energy we're exuding and our body language. And as a mind, body, spirit expert, I just love that that's one of your areas of expertise. So without further ado, let me share with everyone a little bit about your genius. So Kimmy Seltzer is a confidence therapist, authentic dating strategist, and image expert. With vast knowledge and experience as a therapist, a certified style coach, dating coach, and matchmaker. So if you're looking for love, she's definitely somebody you want to listen to. She has helped people find lasting love and connection, attract success, and build valuable relationships using her unique confidence makeover process. Now, I love she talks about having an outside in approach, which is really, I love that. It's a play on words, but it's also a bit of a shift in terms of how oftentimes we talk about personal development. There's a lot of inner work that of course is required, but the outside in work is also super important. It runs both ways. She's been on TED X. She's been on national matchmaking conferences, eHarmony, um, featured in Neutrogena, Cosmopolitan, Oprah Magazine, Red Book, Reader's Digest, Ask Men. So she not only focuses on women, but for my male viewers, know that she's got some special tips for you as well. She's been on Fox Business News, and she has an incredible podcast called The Charisma Quotient. I love that the charisma quotient. So I would just love to tell us how you got into this. You know, what's your story? What made you become this amazing matchmaker, confidence expert, dating expert? You know, how'd you, how'd you hop into this work? I'm so glad you asked about my story because I always chuckle when I hear people like read my bio back because, well, I just, I feel so blessed that I've been able to do all these things to touch so many people. Honestly, the real reason why I'm so passionate about doing what I do is because of my own hot mess, my own story, my own transformation. And I will, I'll tell a little story. And actually I I tell this in my TEDx talk because it's so like, important to what I teach, what I believe and the formula that I work with, with people. And we'll get into the outside in approach. It's kind of embedded in my story. So, you know, in a land far, far away named Chicago, this was years ago, I had a very traditional life. And there I practiced as a therapist for many, many years. Um, Back then, I really, really believed in working from the inside out. That's what like was kind of the traditional, you know, trajectory in the ways that I help people. 
And I had a very traditional life. I had the dog, I had a couple kids, the picket fence, the husband. I still have the kids, by the way. So you see where the story is. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, no. And um, we like all picked up and we moved across the country. We land here in La La Land. I'm in LA now. And we end up doing what all the other people here do. We get a divorce. I'm joking. Like, I, I like to blame LA, I, but I... I would have been here anyway, quite honestly. And really, I think what happened is I was removed from kind of the the insulation and the protection of my traditional life. And I just wasn't addressing or facing the problems that existed. And so when we were removed from that, there I was, I was like raw. And so we end up getting a divorce and there I was all alone in my new castle in my in this new town with no support system, not knowing what to do with my new life. And here's the kicker. I was a therapist, <laughs> right? Like I should know better. And so I did everything that I was taught to do. I did the inside work. I went to therapy myself. I really tried to like work on myself and something really surprising started happening. People would come to me and they would say, Kimmy, like, are you going to go out there and date? And I said, oh, well, you know, I'm not really ready because I'm, I'm doing the work. Right. And then people would ask me later. So, Kimmy, when are you going to go out there? I said, oh, you know, I'm just doing the work. And I realized I was doing the work as a way to, you know, protect myself in really taking action. Honestly, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that at the time, yeah. but I sat there in analysis paralysis, not doing anything to make my life different or move out to the world where I could start learning to flirt and date men. So. I just sat there and I was stuck in my mindset, not only stuck in my mindset, but I was stuck in these mommy clothes as well. And this is where everything happened. So one day, I'll never forget this. I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I was horrified at what I saw. I saw this really sad, frumpy mom with frazzled hair wearing my nursing bras. It wasn't even nursing any longer, right? And oh, yeah. lip flops, right? Like just, and, and wearing all black. And, and clothes that was like three sizes too big. I hadn't even seen also my body shifting. Mm. And it was this like wake up call. I'm like, oh my God, what, what has happened to me? And what have I become? Mm. So I decided to do something very untraditional. I'm like, all right, well, I look like crap. So I'm going to go shopping. <laughs> so I like shopping therapy, right? And I go into the store. And I think I'm going to up-level myself, but no, what am I doing? I'm putting black clothes in my arms again, same mm -hmm. pattern, same thing, right. but I think I'm shifting right now. And you know, when there's people in their life, in your life that send you a message when you're ready to hear it, well, this personal shopper, she was watching me and I now refer her as my fairy godmother because she's, <laughs> she, she came up to me and she says, ma'am, you know, I've been really watching you and I think you should try this on. And she holds up a red dress that looked like three sizes too small. And I said, that's so sweet of you, but that's not my size. And that is not my color. And she says, honey, that is your size. That is your color. <laughs> try it on. Bam, like that. It was like, she hit me over the head with that red dress. And you know, when I came to, I, I, I caught my red dress moment and it's actually, the moment that I love helping people with, it's the moment that you wake up, that you stop numbing out, that you start taking action against things that you just fall into as a pattern or as a protection for mm -hmm. doing something that's kind of scary. So I'm like, you know what? Gosh, darn it. She's right. So I grab the dress and I squeeze into it and I twirl around like Cinderella and bam, there I was. I was like, I just, I just remember like staring at myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm a princess. <laughs> you know, and it was really this like Disney kind of moment. Mm -hmm. And when I actually marinated in it for a little bit, I'm like, you know, I'm going to buy this as a costume and I call it a costume. This is really important. We're going to kind of get into this today. I call it costume confidence mm -hmm. because I still don't really believe it, but I'm like, there's something about this that I need to do. So I bought it is a way of like an experiment to go out into the world and just see what happens. So I wore that 
red dress everywhere. I kid you not. I went to the coffee shop. I went to the grocery store. I went to walk my dog in that red dress. And here is the big epiphany. I started noticing men noticing me for the first time in a very long time after a very dark period. And here's the thing that really surprised me. I didn't like it. I thought this whole time I would like enjoy putting myself out there. And I'm like, gosh, this whole time I was wearing the black clothes to keep me invisible from mm. the men, right? Like it was almost a cloak. And so I had to just practice being seen. That was where it all started. And I realized there was a symbiotic relationship between the outer and the inner when it comes to confidence, that it's not superficial, that how we market ourselves is directly correlated to who we attract and the signals that we send out to the world. So thus, that's where kind of my, my business was born, where I started working from the outside in and I started doing makeovers and well, blah, blah, blah. You heard my bio, but you know, from there is where wait, I hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause like as a sister, I'm like, wait, 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 you're going too fast. So you're wearing the red dress, yeah. right? You start seeing that the men are attracted to you and you don't like it. Yes. There's obviously a path between that and you now helping others. So what Correct. how like I imagine you so you recognize you don't like the attention and then what helped you create a shift? Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Well, and I, I know because I felt myself talking a lot. It's so okay. It like, oh, I'm like, I'm don't, don't skip the that. juicy part. All the women are like, but how did you how well, did I'm you teasing. shift that? I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm flirting a little bit. So yeah. They, um well, no, because really the transition was re like, it was a longer game. I, I thought maybe, well, once I just get used to wearing the red dress, everything will be fine. It was, I mean, that was the first step, right? And mm -hmm. so, you know, one of the things that I really help people with and which I kind of like embodied at that moment was that it takes the small tangible action steps mm -hmm. that add up to the bigger picture, the bigger win that will increase your confidence because I just had to first get used to being seen, right? And right. after that, I started liking it. I started enjoying it. I started embracing it. And that, and that embodiment, I knew that I was starting to not only feel differently, but move differently in the world. Like my body language shifted big time. So it was a vehicle. That red dress was a vehicle at which change the entire course of my life. And mm -hmm. so now as I help people, I think it's, I mean, look, there's not too many things in life that it has that instant impact and, and kind of gratification. The inside job's a long game, right? Mm -hmm. But I find that when you start with things that are tangible and action oriented and things that you can see and touch and feel, that's what impacts our confidence. And, and, and it's just the quickest way and the gateway to that. So for me, it was about practice. For me, it was about repetition. For me, it was about also gaining support from other people and start. And then I started collecting other single gals, right? And then suddenly I had my sex in the city gals and we started going out and we started practicing <laughs> flirting, right? Like there were little yes. things along the way. It was almost yeah. as if, and hopefully this kind of answers your question. It was almost as if I was like Dorothy going down my yellow brick road with my little basket, collecting tools as I went down yes, with all yes. these experiences. I mean, yeah. I thought at that time that I would find Oz, like I would have like, that'll lead me to my soulmate, the one. But I realized that we all know Oz is just a man behind the curtain and we have a constant journey with all of this. And there's a yes. lot of twists and turns along the way. <laughs> and I imagine you started dating. And you started Absolutely. to figure some things out about that whole world. And, you know, so I love that. I love the image of you being on your Dorothy, you know, journey, or we could call it our hero's journey, you Correct. know, where it's all, it's all part of our spiritual life journey, this whole experience. And what you're touching on, I see so often with the women that I work with who come in to really learn how to love their bodies, learn how to unlock their superpowers as a woman to really stand in their confident self and simultaneously, and men too, by the way, simultaneously, they're also coming into their full beingness as their next level self and wanting to call in that partner, right? That loving partner 
And one of the first things that I know you teach and I teach is you, you need to be the match. If you have a list of attributes, uh, correct, you can't just say, I want him or her or that person to be all of these things. You want to ask yourself, who am I being in the world? Am I being the match for that? So I know that you've put all of these tools into your Dorothy basket and you call it your magic formula. It's called your charisma quotient. So how do you use it to help people build sexy confidence? Yeah. After clicking my heels and my little ruby <laughs> shoes, um, I, yeah, boom, this, this formula was born. Obviously it was a long, another long road ahead of me, but, um, I, I, found that after working with so many people doing makeovers, I also go in the field and I have flirt sessions. I'm kind of like hitch meets what not to wear, if you know those references. <laughs> we go shopping and then we go out in the field and I just help I people it. like just feel more comfortable and sexy and learning how to flirt. That's where it all begins. I realized there was almost these three pillars that I was working on to help people make over their lives and attract whatever it is that they wanted in their lives. And so the three pillars are this. The first is I call style intelligence. It's the outside. And what style intelligence in includes is your wardrobe, your body language, your energy, your first impression, your sex appeal. It's how you move. It's like what you do as well. Like it's, it's just that like masculine and feminine energy that you can exude just by wearing certain things. And it's how you market yourself. And one thing that I, I wanted to just be really clear, because there might be some of you listening being like, oh, well, that seems so superficial. And, you know, I, there's so much more to me. And I don't want a man for just liking me for just what I look like. And hear me out. This is not about changing who you are. It's about marketing yourself so that someone gets to know who you are, because you could do all the juicy inside work you can just like in my story, but if you're not putting yourself out there and marketing yourself and making eye contact and inviting that in love is going to pass you by. And I see this time and time again with people who are scared or introverted or high achievers and they're in their head, like all these little things. And once you get more present with some of this, like outside stuff, it's just, it's almost magical. So well, that's where I start. Yeah, yeah, I just want to, I just want to underscore that. And also for, you know, the word, the phrase marketing yourself, I know, my, I know at least my audience, they might be like, Ooh, ick, ick. I do not want to market <laughs> myself. So let me, yeah. let me, let me just add to a yes. And to what uh. you're saying, it's all this, we could use all kinds of words for this, my friends. It's at the end of the day, it's how you're showing up in the world. My, my mom's husband, Joe, says he absolutely believes they travel dressed to the nines. Like he's got his jacket. He's always wearing a sport jacket, really nice slacks, some sort of loafers. He's, he's like, you know, he's always got like matching socks with the color. I mean, like he's, it's full thing. And he believes that he's treated differently in the world when he dresses up. And at the end of the day, people are visual as much as we want to say, we're looking past yeah. that those gorgeous shoes or whatever color it is. Like if, if I put on a hoodie and sweatpants and I'm not wearing whatever makeup or whatever my hair and tennis shoes, and I go wherever in the world, I'm going to be viewed a certain way, period, end of story. I, and I can tell you this, when I'm doing a virtual event and I'm dressed to the nines, I've got my hair and my makeup done and I've got my colors on and I go to the grocery store out to eat afterwards, the way I'm said hello to at the restaurant down the street is night and day different than when I'm in my mommy clothes and I'm, I'm not going to dress like that mm -hmm. to the football game. Cause people are going to be looking at me like, what, where did you just come from? You know? So it's, it's just knowing it doesn't mean that I don't have all of those items in my, in my wardrobe. Right. So one of the ways I describe it to my clients is I've got my mommy wear mm -hmm. that I'm not going to wear my sexy, you know, tight, dress that I'm going to go on date night with my husband to the soccer field because it's going to draw attention that I'm not looking for. Right. So I have that, that clothing. I have my business wear that's feminine, stylish, but also not too revealing because that's not the energy that I'm wanting to exude in those professional, you know, environments. But then that's a little too like, you know, a little too conservative for date night with my husband. I do want to show off my curves to him and 
feel sexy and, and be in my more like the clothing that it's also about how I feel. It's not about marketing myself so that I'm pleasing others or showing up in a way that no. people around me want. And I just want to say that because I know that's what you teach. It's about how I feel when I'm on stage speaking or how I feel when I want to be comfortable and just run the kids around on their football game day or how I want to feel when I walk down the stairs and I'm going on a date night with my husband. I want to feel a sense of that feminine sensuality, sexual flirt. I want to feel flirty and I don't feel flirty in my mom clothes and I don't feel flirty in my business attire, right? I feel flirty with certain colors, textures, shapes, um, cuts, right? And it and and that just takes time and it takes support. And I, I'm saying that, Kimmy, because you can shorten the learning curve. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to take a long time. And I know for a fact I've received support in this area. I've been so grateful. And I, I have so many clients that just don't even know where to begin. Like they would go into like Nordstrom's or Macy's or whatever mm -hmm. store is in their area. And they'd be like, I don't even know where to start. Like the woman that came up to you and said, honey, this red dress, let me just tell you, they just, that's what they do. They just know, right. What's going to work. So I just want to say marketing yourself just simply means how you're showing up in the world, but most importantly, how you want to feel. And what I love about the red dress story is that you were asked to, invited to, and it really was the universe coming to you saying, stretch, stretch, yeah, yeah, yeah. stretch who you are, stretch who you see yourself as and to be. And I mean, red is such a dynamic color. Like I can't imagine walking my dog, and I could in a red dress, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So pillar number one, right? I love that. Yeah. So tell us about these, these other two pillars. Yeah. Can I just comment on what you said? Cause I think it's super yeah, important as we, as we move into the two, because you're so right. And what I tell people all the time is like, if you're a woman, it's not about the man. And if you're a man, it's not about the woman, it's about you. And it's not until you look in the mirror and you say, I got it going on. I am sexy. That's when other people will feel it too and see you that way as well. And so I'm really glad you highlighted that. And then also just to put a little research on this too, because sometimes people will look at me, oh, this blonde haired lady from LA, she's just like all about the stuff. Like there's research <laughs> that backs this up that in a first impression, people are making judgments and assumptions based on two things. By the way, it's seven seconds now to make a first impression. It used to be 30 seconds, like a couple of years ago. And I believe it's probably even faster now with Tinder and Bumble and all the things oh, going so sure, fast, yeah. right? But people are making judgments and assumptions based on two things, two things only. And this is just research-based. In the brain, we judge and we connect with people who have like a positive attitude, right? Mm -hmm. So attitude is one, which is what is written on our face, our energy. Mm -hmm. And the second is your wardrobe. That's it. End of story. So it's not even what you say that's as important as how you show up. Mm -hmm. And I say that because not to like, again, get the, the rolling of the eyes, you might, you know, find that, but actually, gosh, why wouldn't you, if you knew that you would make such a difference in the impact that you had with the different costumes, as you were calling it, like of the different parts of your lives, knowing your audience, what you're trying to attract, <laughs> that you're shifting one thing like knowing, okay, well, if I wear red, that's going to attract a man, by the way, research shows that men are highly attracted to red. So I always have, really? the ladies. I, don't, I haven't heard that yeah. one. That makes sense. Yeah, it actually yeah. is connected to fertility. Um, so making me want to run out and get my, I've had red dresses in the past, but now I'm like, I need a new red dress. Oh my God. <laughs> no, every woman needs a red dress and, and there's different shades of red. So no, you're, that's what yeah. I, I help people with color and cut and all that. Mm. But it's, it's again, if you just did one thing that shifted something, why wouldn't you do it? Like, again, these are easy tweaks that have a huge impact. All right. So I just want to wait, hold on for my men that are watching are women yes. attracted to red for men. No, or what's the no, color? women are attracted to blue. So when mm. men wear blue, mm. it's, it's high and blue has a meaning of authority. 
So like for women, if you're doing like a power talk or you're networking, blue is beautiful color as well. Um, but men are just seen as more attractive in blue, but red has, I mean, there's just more research done on that and how it's connected to fertility for yeah. women. It's, it's Thanks. so crazy. We're all so primal. Um, okay. So going back to the other pillars. So once people feel more confident and again, it could be small shifts. Sometimes it's a make under quite honestly, like sometimes mm. it's too much and it's masking some mm. of the inside. So it's really like looking at people individually. I'm not a cookie cutter approach coach. It's not one size fits all because we're all so different. I think it's the therapist in me, like understanding where people are coming from. And I assess each of these pillars. The second is your emotional intelligence. So that's where we kind of look inward, right? How, our self-worth, our resilience, um, how we value ourselves, how we express emotion and feelings, how we um, show ourselves in, in a vulnerable way, in a real way, which creates authentic connections. So I do a lot of work on how we, even just having those conversations, how we set boundaries and express ourselves is so important for like partnership. And then the third pillar is your social intelligence, which is how we interact with the world. It's our interpersonal communication. It's our social comfort. And yes, this is where flirting comes in. <laughs> and so it's a big, big part of my business. I feel like it's one of the first things that I really like getting people comfortable with because it's just this energy that creates attraction and positivity. Nice. Beautiful. Well, so give us one flirting tip. What's one flirting tip? Yes. So I will say the first thing that I always tell people is that you have to look at the definition of flirting. It's fascinating. If you ever look in the dictionary, you know what it is? It's to behave as though you're attracted to someone without the serious intention of an outcome. Oh, I, love, I love that, right? Because the reason that means I most... flirt all the time. I flirt. You do. All the time. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, you're a huge flirt. And here's the thing: like we flirt with each other. This is the this is the thing what people don't get is that flirting is an energy. Like I'll flirt with dogs, old ladies, men, everywhere. Like it's just that magnetism that draws people to you. That last part of the definition, not being attached to the outcome, is why yes. most people don't flirt because they're right. worried about what's next rather right. than what is. Yes. Yes. So given that I like to be playful. And one of the tips about flirting is to get out of your head and get more in your body and be silly and goofy. And that could be, you know, just creating that like fun, goofy energy with your girlfriends. You know, mm -hmm. it's again, it's not worrying about the words that are coming out. In fact, the best interactions are ones that are nonsensical, you know, because we all are attracted to that childlike mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. And that's the problem with adults is as we have had bad experiences or we've gotten hurt, mm -hmm. we, we get like the guard up, right? And it's like a bricks that are just keep going up. And so we develop filters. And so we're worried about what other people think, or we'll only turn it on with people that we're interested in. And none of that's a good idea when it comes to flirting, because you will block off some amazing opportunities. Like, can I share a story? Do we have time? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I know. I know we're running close on time. There was, um, th this is a perfect example. There was a woman who was only target specific and who she would like turn it on and turn it off. She didn't want to give the guys the wrong impression. And we walked into a bar and there wasn't really anybody like eligible per se. There were two people in there and she's like, Kimmy, let's leave. There's, n there's no one here. I said, no, I'm sorry. There are two people here. And she's like, well, they're not like single. And, you know, like it, it was a weird scene. So I'm like, I want to teach you that you can flirt and have fun with everyone. And she got new, like we had gone shopping already. So she had her dating costume on. She has a red dress. She was used to like dressing drabby and stuff like that. I'm like, let's just kind of feel into the environment. Yeah. So we sit down and this guy across the way, he was married. So she like looks at me and she's like, I'm not flirting with a married man. And then there was the bartender, right? And I said, no, we're going to flirt with everyone in this room, two people. So we start flirting with the bartender and the married guy's laughing at us because we're being silly. We're being fun. Obviously we have the outfits on and he ends up sharing his story of how he met his wife. Like he was kind of starting to talk. And now I see my client, she's starting to melt. And she's like, oh, he's so great. And so then he, he buys us some wine he comes over and we have this amazing conversation. And in the middle of it, 
I say to him, because she came from San Francisco, and I said, by any chance, do you know any singles up in the Bay Area? And he's like, actually, it's so weird that you asked me that, because I was thinking this whole time that I have a friend who would be a perfect match for you, meaning my client. Right. And so they exchanged numbers. She went out and that guy became her boyfriend. All because of two it. people. Two I people love that story. I love that. Well, and to underscore, I think sometimes the misnomer, and I know I've heard this from some of my own clients, is that flirting is sexual. Flirting yes. from your definition, what I'm gathering, right? is it's not about sexuality or sexual attraction or being sexy in that definition. It's, I love the the definition in the, in the dictionary, that it's about letting people know that you are interested in them, that, that you're allowing yourself to play with energy, to have this open, expressive, attractive interaction with people without an attachment to, well, if I talk to this person and show them I'm interested or open and being my authentic self, that somehow they're going to be worried that I'm trying to, you know, like get with them and they're married. No, it's, you honestly don't know where all of this could go. If you just allow yourself to be open to interacting in the world in this more playful, up-leveled, letting yourself shine, be attractive, magnetizing mm -hmm. to you opportunities, new people, new resources. So I love this. And I know you have a special workshop coming up that is going to really give people what I know they're thirsty and hungry for and craving now, which are even more tangible tools and resources. And you're going to be providing that in an upcoming workshop. So tell us about that. Yes, I am. And you know, you're so right. And this is what the workshop is about. Like both men and women have responsibility and approachability. It's not just the man's job to go up to the woman. The woman also has to turn her cab light on and send signals <laughs> like, Hey, I'm open for business. You know, guys yeah. are scared. And so that's why I love doing co-ed workshops. I, as I mentioned, I, or you mentioned, I work with both men and women. Yeah. Most of my programs are co-ed. Um, I do have a retreat coming up. That's just for women to get their spark their sexy kind of thing. But I, I like to really start with that practice piece. So in, on March 26, depending on when you're watching this, I am doing a co-ed workshop. It's called Unleashing Your Sexy Confidence and how to create that magnetism and attraction everywhere you go. And we're going to just deep dive more into some of the subjects we just talked about, including body language and conversation hacks and what creates chemistry and what also how do you exude femininity and masculinity within that people confused sometimes sex appeal and femininity and they're actually different so we're going to really just unpack a lot and we also have an opportunity where you can go into a zoom room with me as a vip option where we do actual activities with each other it's super fun so yeah i would love for anybody in your audience listening to join us this is where remember in my story it all started with taking action. If you are the kind of person who is used to just watching and being kind of the voyeur, well, it, what if you just actually just did one thing right now, right? Like, and, and this could such an easy digestible thing to do. Yeah. So yeah, I, I hope to see some of you there yeah. and I do have a bonus for people. Yes. Yes. I was going to say, make sure you tell them about this really cool bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we were talking about style and, you know, one of the best ways of getting started and feeling good in your clothes and your style is to understand your body type. And for, I have two gifts, one for women, one for men. If you sign up for this workshop, you will definitely get this guide for women. It's called um, a body shape style guide. Women have five body shapes. Okay. And so by the way, this has nothing to do with your weight. It has to do with how your bone structure is. So you measure your shoulders, your waist, your hips, and then the guide goes into what body type you are, what clothes flatter that body type and what clothes to stay away from. And it's a super easy way to just build your confidence in your clothes. The second is the man's fashion manifesto. And because, you know, look, men secretly want to know this, but they're not like sitting around on a Sunday talking about the latest fashion styles. Usually that's not the case. So I do go over style tips and men only have three body types, but I do go over that. And I do put in there some grooming tips because guys, 
you know, it doesn't take <laughs> a lot, like trim the nails, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. You don't ask for much, but like put be put together. And so I do go over some of those tips as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. I get asked that question constantly. And I think having a, a guide and then yeah. a guide is also something you can take with you, either if they're doing coaching with you and you're doing a, a makeover or if they just want to go into the store and find that, you know, there's in a lot of these stores and supermarkets now, they have a stylist at the store that you could literally hand to and say, hey, here's my type. Help me find some things that will work with this. So I love it. I highly recommend it. I'm looking forward to, you know, this beautiful workshop that you have. And I know lots of people who I'm going to be sharing this with. I think the bonuses are super fun. And I'm throwing in a free transcendence class, which is a conscious Ooh. dance embodiment work where you can really just feel even more confident in your skin. So when you walk into the room, you know who you are, you know to how to stand in your energy. And then with Kimmy's help, you'll be adorned in a way that really <laughs> helps you shine your light and send the message that you are here that you are ready and that you're attracting to you all the love and all the abundance and all the success that you are worthy of in your life. So I got so a sexy great. bundle too. You? All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for doing your work and helping others. You know, I just love that you've taken all the guesswork out of it. You've created tools, you've simplified it so that it doesn't have to take as long for others as, you know, doing this on that, on that, you know, wizard of Oz journey does not have to take so long. We can get to that, you know, place where we really feel great in that next level version of ourselves. So thank you again. Absolutely, Thank you. And it's the small steps down that road is what ends up being the bigger win for you. And it, again, it'll build your confidence along the way. So thank you so, so much for having me and yeah, make sure you click that link that yes. you're going to be sharing to come. To yes, the yes, yes. Yeah. So to, to know how to get to the workshop and how to get these bonuses, there is a link in the description below this video. Thank you for saying that Kimmy. Absolutely. That's where they can find it. And uh, to be continued, I'd love to have you on again. Thanks for Oh, I love it. Thank you.